Okay, so I have my muslin folded in half on that center line of my dart. Um, it's really important that you have that perfectly folded so that one side isn't larger than the other. Um, I always recommend because sometimes when you go to sew your dart, you might have problems seeing exactly where the dart point is. Um, so I usually do an even bigger marking just so that I make sure I don't miss that when I sew it. Next, honestly, with this folded in half, you don't have to pin, but I like to add a couple pins just to make sure that my fabric doesn't move as I'm sewing. So even if I just add two or three pins, including one at the dart point, that'll be good. All right, so just like with a regular seam, it's important, it's extra important with a dart that you backstitch at the um, end of the legs because a dart is a tension point. So if this is wrapped around the body, like say this is at the apex or the point of your bust um, and it's tight and you don't backstitch, this seam will end up tearing. So we want to make sure to backstitch so that our dart doesn't come undone. And then you'll notice if you follow the directions on page 132 in your textbook, um, they have you um, beginning to sew from your dart tip or dart point. Um, and they have you back stitching right there and making your way down the dart legs. You can do that, that's perfectly fine, but a lot of times when you try to dart back stitch at the tip of the dart, it ends up coming to less of a point. Um, you might not stay perfectly on that line because it's difficult, and then you don't get as clean of a dart. So I'm gonna show you a different way um, that I actually think is easier and makes a nicer, cleaner dart. I also want to mention your book has you guys punching a hole in the dart tip. Um, well, right below it to know where it is. I don't think that's necessary either. I think you can just use the pencil markings. All right, so in order to sew this, you want to have your machine settings at a 2.5 stitch, a width of zero, your needle should be in the center, um, and just a straight seam on your stitch wheel. A dart doesn't have seam allowance because we're just sewing along the line of the dart leg. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line up my pencil line, my dart leg, right in the center of my presser foot. I'm actually going to use the hand wheel so that I'm extra specific, making my needle go directly through my pencil marking. I'm going to sew about three stitches forward and then back stitch. Okay, and then I just want to follow my stitch line or my dart leg all the way to my dart point. Taking my needles out as I go. And now instead of back stitching at my dart point, because like I said, sometimes that doesn't come out as clean, I'm literally just going to sew off the edge of my fabric. So when I get to that point, um, the point of my dart, I'm going to sew off the side, having my stitch line be as close to the center line as possible or the center fold. Um, and I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to use my hand wheel once again to be extra vigilant about where I'm sewing. Okay, so now I want to pull my thread out. Um, you want to leave a train of a couple inches of thread and you can see that I went exactly to my dart point 
and this side I'm actually slightly, slightly off my dart line, but for the most part, I'm very symmetrical. So the last thing you're gonna do, instead of actually, instead of back stitching, we're gonna take the two strings at the point of your dart, and we're just gonna tie a couple knots, and that'll count as our back stitch. This way our dart won't come undone, but we're also being very accurate and we have one solid point instead of um, multiple machine stitches. Okay, so you wanna tie that off like about three times. You're gonna snip those extra threads and now you can see that we have a tapered dart. The intake of this side, you can see that the fabric's a lot thinner, so this could wrap around the bust. It could go around the hip area, around the um, back, the shoulder, wherever it may be. So you want to iron your dart to one side. It doesn't matter which side. Again, if this was on the body, we'd go with gravity and iron down. Um, you don't want to press too much at the point because you'll end up making like kind of warping the fabric. Um, normally we would press a dart on what's known as an ironing ham, which is actually rounded. So it'll iron this, um, on a round, like kind of stuffed <laughs> piece. Um, but unfortunately we don't have the ironing hams available because they're in the studio. So try to make that look as cleaned up as you can. And that's your basic straight tapered dart. You'll be using these a lot in the future um, if you continue sewing. Thanks for watching guys.